Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's new Netflix docuseries is full of some major bombshells. Access Hollywood is taking a look at the top moments from Harry and Meghan. From how Prince William and Kate Middleton allegedly acted when first meeting Meghan, to tons of new moments with Archie and Lilibet. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are giving fans a rare look at their kids growing up, including more sweet moments with their baby girl. In the couple's new Netflix docu-series, Harry and Meghan, the pair share never-before-seen images of their one-year-old daughter, Lilibet Diana. In a black-and-white photo from the special, Meghan is cradling their newborn in what appears to be her nursery. Another clip shows Harry reading to three-year-old Archie and one-year-old Lilibet. The father of two also gets candid for the first time while talking about taking on the role of dad as he addresses the camera. My son, my daughter, my children are mixed race, and I'm really proud of that. When my kids grow up and they look back at this moment and they turn to me and say, what did you do in this moment? I want to be able to give them an answer. I hope, I hope, it's off to what we go. I think it's such a responsibility as human beings that if you bring a small person into this world, that you should be doing everything you can to make the world a better place for them. Five years, one way. Get a chance to be this close to what he likes. Everything. Because they're scared of you. He's coming. I think it's important. I gotta do it. He's foot, mama. Because I was with you. Oh my God. I gotta do this. You've got a dirty foot. Papa is a bird watcher, so this is a really big moment for him. In never before seen footage from the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, the pair can be seen celebrating a first birthday, cuddling up under an umbrella, carrying their babies with them to feed the chickens, and catching snowflakes outside as they open up about their life as a family of four. We've been really conscious of protecting our kids as best as we can, and also understanding the role that they play in this really historical family. As a dad and as parents, I think consent is a really key piece to this, that if you have children, it should be your consent as to what you share. Back at it now, because now I know so much and I'm so glad I didn't then. Meghan Markle learned a lot about royal life when she first met Prince William and Kate Middleton. In Meghan and Harry's new docuseries on Netflix, the 41-year-old recalled meeting her brother-in-law and sister-in-law during a, quote, casual double date. Even when Will and Kate came over and I had met her for the first time, they came over for dinner. I remember I was in ripped jeans and I was barefoot. It's like I was a hugger, I've always been a hugger. I didn't realize that that is really jarring for a lot of Brits. Megan noted that she really thought the royal etiquette would be left at the door after their duties were done, but she was wrong. In the new series, Megan and Harry also look back at their own love story, and they revealed that they actually met on Instagram, even though Megan said she was, quote, really intent on being single. I was scrolling through my feed and uh, someone who was a friend had this video of the two of them, it was like a Snapchat. Um, oh, gosh, isn't that whole thing? It started like with dog ears. The dog, and the dog ears. And That's what he saw of me. After their mutual friend told Meghan Harry was interested, the former actress went through the royal's private Instagram to see what he was really about. And she was impressed. That's your homework. You're like, hmm, look, let me see what they're about in their feed. Not what someone else says about them, but mm. what they are putting out about themselves. The two started texting, and Meghan agreed to go on a date while in London for Wimbledon 2016. But Harry was late. Again, I didn't know him. So I was like, oh, is, is this what he does? Got it. Like, this I'm not doing. I'm not gonna sit. <laughs> what was that supposed to mean? Like, like one of the guys who's so much of an ego that you're not gonna, that you don't, that any girl would sit around and wait for a half hour for you. And I was just not interested in that. And then when I walked in, I he was hot, so sweaty, sweet. red ball of mesh. She's like, oh, she like, oh, that's not, no, not, that's not what you want. That's not what you <laughs> are. So, you genuinely sorry. were like so embarrassed and late. <laughs>
what she needed from me was so much more than I was able to give. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are opening up. In part two of their Netflix docuseries, Meghan recalled wanting to end her life amid her struggles with the royal family and the British press. And that was the scariest thing about it, is it was such clear thinking. The Duke of Sussex went on to admit that he wished he handled her mental health battle differently, as it reminded him of his late mother, Princess Diana's own struggles. Stated, I, I knew that she was struggling, we were both struggling, but I never thought that it would get to that stage. And the fact that it got to that stage, I felt angry and ashamed. But Harry noted that he was too focused on his royal duties to give her the support she needed. I didn't deal with it particularly well. I dealt with it as institutional Harry as opposed to husband Harry. And what took over my feelings was my royal role. I had been trained to worry more about what are people going to think if we don't go to this event, we're going to be late. And looking back on it now, I, I, I hate myself for it. Megan also said that she wanted to go and get help, but the palace wouldn't let her. I wanted to go somewhere to get help, but I wasn't allowed to. They were concerned about how that would look for the institution. Harry said he would have expected support from the people closest to them, but they just got, quote, the opposite. It's always been a bit of a royal thing to go on a tour with your child. The South Africa tour, Archie being four months old, and off we went and we took him with us. And it was the first time that we sort of traveled as a family for official work. It was a real strange experience. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are opening up about what it was like bringing a baby into the royal family. In the fourth episode of Netflix's docuseries, Harry and Meghan, the couple shared what the tabloid said and the scrutiny they faced when it came to keeping their first child, Archie, private. Archie's just been born. Media, social media starts to sort of take on a life of its own. Someone in the media posting a photograph of a couple with a chimp. And at the top it said, royal baby leaves hospital. So that was one of the first things that I saw. It was a metaphor for the way this family were being treated, that their dignity and their right to be treated equally and have their humanity respected and acknowledged was secondary to a white patriarchal media establishment. Were you aware of the pressure on them to go pose for the media at that time? Mm -hmm. At the time of Archie's birth, Megan's mom, Doria, stayed with them and helped take care of her grandson, while Megan and Harry dealt with the media glare. I was with her. I mean, I was there. I'd been there a month. Yeah. Yeah, and that, um, well, they had already, you know, just stripped both of them of any kind of privacy. It was almost like, it's not your child, it's, it's the institution's child. She's saying, no, this is my baby. I was there when she brought him home from the hospital. No tiny little thing. Mm -hmm. I'd never been a grandma. I mean, I, you know, I'm, all, I'm new to being a grandma. My mom stayed with us for a month solid. And it was great to have her there. But then after that, you thought we were in a position where we didn't have someone to help us with Archie. After Doria left to go back to the States, Megan and Harry explained that they needed help again. And that was when they hired their nanny, Lauren Kumalo, who was very excited to get the job. I had this phone call and they were like, Prince Harry and Megan would like to see you and speak to you about looking after Archie. I was like, hang on a minute, I need to sit down. I remember just driving so far. I think I did get a ticket, actually. Yes, I did. <laughs> when I arrived at Frogmore Cottage, I see this guy, he's tall, he's ginger, and he's walking barefoot. And I have gone and bought a new pair of shoes in Clark's. 
and suddenly whatever I thought or felt, the formality just sort of slid and I felt so at ease. In the morning when he woke up, first thing mum and dad would come in, they would be with their baby, she would feed him and then after that I'll take over and normally would go for a morning walk. She said, is it okay if I like tie him on my back with a mud cloth like we do in Zimbabwe? Yes, let's do that. You're oh, walking. just legs like this, like <laughs> hugging Laura, like this, fast asleep. It's it was true. brilliant. She just took care of not just Archie, but she took care of oh, us. She true. definitely took care of me. Besides having to face the media at the time while also having a baby, there were some very happy private moments as the couple shared more never before seen beautiful photographs in this episode, which include Archie as a little baby being bathed by his loving parents. And in another emotional shot, Megan cradles him as a tiny newborn sitting in front of a window, pressing her forehead against her son's. The couple kept their privacy for four months until they went on their first royal tour with Archie, tagging along. And Harry explained what that experience was like. Early into the job, we have to prepare for a tour. I'm like, what do I pack for a small prince? Please place items in the locker carefully. It's always been a bit of a royal thing to go on a tour with your child. The South Africa tour, Archie being four months old, and off we went and we took him with us. And it was the first time that we sort of traveled as a family for official work. It was a real strange experience. The couple were living at Frogmore Cottage when Archie was born, and they revealed that they were ecstatic when Queen Elizabeth offered the home up to them. They knew that they didn't want to bring Archie up in this frenzy that they lived in. So then to suddenly have my grandmother go, there's a house, Frogmore Cottage, it's available, are you interested? Yes, please. Yes. It was a place where we had so many memories. From our courtship, our engagement, our wedding, our walks. And then where we ended up, you know, having oh. our baby. Prior to living at Frogmore, the couple were living in Nottingham Cottage, but they shared that Prince Harry would hit his head and it wouldn't be what you'd expect from royals. As Oprah Winfrey joined them there for tea one time and couldn't believe how they were living. Favorite video, Thursday afternoon. Someone's happy. A lot of people were concerned we were living at a palace, and we were, in a cottage we were on, living a pa on, on palace, palace grounds. grounds. Yeah. Kensington Palace sounds very regal. Of course it does. It says palace in the name. But Nottingham Cottage, it was so small. The whole thing's on a slight, on a slight lean, <laughs> really low ceiling, so I don't know who was there before. They must have been very short. He would just hit his head constantly in that, <laughs> that place because he's so tall. Me with a hoe and H varnishing. It was just a chapter in our lives where I don't think anyone could believe what it was actually like behind the scenes. Well, Oprah came over for tea, didn't she? She and, did. And when she came in, she sat down, she goes, no one would ever believe it. No one would ever believe it. <laughs> Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are shedding more light on their family dynamic. In part two of their Netflix docuseries, Prince Harry recalled being shouted out by his brother, Prince William, during a 90-minute discussion with Queen Elizabeth to, quote, talk things through about his and Meghan's desires to step back from the royal family. I got there, I was given five options. One being all in, no change. Five being all out. Prince Harry said he chose option three of being half in, half out, but that allegedly provoked his older brother. Half in, half out have our own jobs, but also work in support of the Queen. But it became very clear very quickly that that goal was not up for discussion or debate. It was terrifying to have my brother um, scream and shout at me and my father say things that just simply weren't true. And The Prince noted that he left the meeting with no set plan and it just caused more of a wedge between him and Prince William. 